Oh boy, it's a Mega Man! This game's like a legend. It's pretty fucking good. I mean, I really don't feel like I need to sing its praises, but whatever! It's got tight controls, it's got a simple objective, it's just fucking... It's fun to play, so go slap it in your nest machine and have a grand old time. Before 1987, when Mega Man came out, it was hard for a lot of game designers to understand what games needed to engross a player. You know, to, to carry you along, to keep you wanting to play their game about... squares. There really wasn't a book written on game design, and oftentimes designers wrote books on why their game was fun. Like, literally, you had to read through manuals, and, and even then the games were still confusing, and I, I don't even... <laughs> Inherent rules of gaming didn't exist, so, so video gaming was treated like traditional gaming, you know, like, like baseball and solitaire. You just have to have one, like, tell you the rules, and then you can kind of play after you watch someone else play a couple of times, and I don't get it. And there's not really anything wrong with that, but what's unique about video games is that there are ways that you can teach a player as they play. And I'm not talking about fucking educational games, Mavis Bacon... Number Muncher. I'm talking about teaching a player all about your game. You know, like, how to play it. Now, usually when you hear things like, how to play, you think of things like a tutorial, or a bunch of stupid dumb menus that pop up that you gotta read, or one of these... <laughs> See, look, I know you're not a stupid kid, because I say fuck a lot, and you're okay with that, but I think it's weird how gaming subject matter has been aimed more towards adults, and teenagers with all the blood, and the killing, and the bam, boom, boobity, bop! But the way games are designed seems like it's catering more towards kids who don't know what the fuck is going on with the world. They don't know Obama! Let me give you an example. This is a very scientific graph showing the amount of times a gamer says, yeah, I get it, during gameplay over the years. See, in the 80s, this very rarely happened because games were crafty about the way that they taught players, and they did a pretty good job respecting the intelligence of human beings, but sometimes they made things a little too... Oh, man, what? Now, you can see there was a rapid increase in, yeah, I get it, in the late 90s due to gaming hitting the mainstream. This is a result of gaming developers assuming the non-gamer masses are all dumb, and they can't identify simple patterns in their head like normal human beings can, and need to be able to do in order to... be. And besides, no matter how stupid you are, I'm sure you don't enjoy it when you're having a good time and all of a sudden someone comes up and goes, oh, hey! You know what? You know what? You, need to just, you really need to jump over this open pit because it'll kill you! Okay, I just wanted you to know. Okay, thanks. So what does all this crap have to do with Mega Man? Well, everything, really. Mega Man's strength, even way back in the 80s, has always been its ability to teach a player through its level design. It won't very often put you in a situation where you have to, like, learn immediately how to do something, and then react faster than your brain can even fucking respond? Yeah, like that. Let's take a look at some examples! In Mega Man 1 and Guts Man stage, there are these platforms sliding along these little path lines. You jump on the first platform with no fear, whatever, and you just kind of ride it out, and then FUCK! What the fuck is that thing? Whoop! Mega Man, Mega Man, there's a hole in the zip line that you- <laughs> No, shut up! I don't need you! Because look, the game shows me what it is. Even before I feel confident enough to jump down, another platform moves over it, and whoosh! Okay, so there you go, I fall to my death. I'm glad I- I'm glad I knew that so it wasn't fucking shoved down my throat by a robot chiming in. Get it? And Mega Man 2, I'm sure you all know this, Quick Man stage has this segment where you start dropping right away. There's like these big yellow beams that are like, BOOM! So Whoop, Mega Man, Mega Man, come in! There's these big yellow beams that kill you if you- Shut your mouth! I don't need you! Cause look, the stage is shaped like a funnel, so it draws me towards the bottom. So I've got no problem feeling like there's some tension in escaping these obnoxiously loud death beams, you dumb bitch. All around Mega Man 3, there's these big green ball swinging Whoop, dudes. Mega Man, Mega Man! Those are called Hammer Joes. They'll swing their mighty hammer around and then throw it. So you better watch your- I already know this! Cause look, the levels are all designed so it's uncommon for me to actually be in their line of fire once they throw their ball for the first time. The designers wanted it to feel justified when you got hit. It was your fault you got hit, not theirs. And overcoming that obstacle is more satisfying as a result. Because you're improving by learning. Mega Man 5 and Gyro Man stage, there's a- she gone? I'm fucking serious, I- Okay. All right, I don't think I hear anything. So, in Gyro Man stage, there's these flying spiky dudes that fall down on you, but you kind of have a lot of space to avoid them, so it's not really a big deal. Suddenly, you jump on this weird platform, and because when you're- Mega Man! Those platforms fall with Hey! No fucking shit! They're falling! They're fucking falling! I can see that! How many fuck? I'm going crazy here! <laughs> Look, I'm sorry, I just- I don't feel sorry for you. Okay, so you jump on these platforms, and since there's really nothing in your way, you're just like, oh, I'm just gonna keep going right. But then you see that they're falling. 
So after learning about both of these things, the spiky guys and the falling platforms in a controlled environment, you're introduced to both at the same time. So now there's like this really big challenge, so you don't feel like nobody told you what the fuck's going on with the spiky guys and the fallen rocks. So cool, alright? So after six games of Mega Man with some slight changes here and there, people were like, eh, fucking Mega, whatever, Mega Man 12, what is this, Land Before Time? And Capcom was like, fuck! People are losing interest in Mega Man, we gotta make a new WHAM! Holy fuck, this game's awesome! Look at the graphics and the music! Oh my god, it feels so good! Ah, this is not Sega Genesis, it's Super Nintendo! See, this is a sequel, this is a fucking sequel! Thought I was gonna talk about bad sequels all the time on Sequelitis? Fuck no! This game makes my dick rock hard! Remember the first episode, you know, what they did wrong, what they did right? Fucking please. This is... Why, Why Mega Man X is so good, good that it makes my, my dick, dick rock hard. hard! Also, I talk about what elements of the original Mega Man games were enhanced to be even more effective. Number one! The intro stage! Alright, sir, if you're a seasoned Mega Man classic player, the first thing you'll notice about Mega Man X is that you don't immediately get thrown into a stage select. You always start out at an intro level. Uh, alright, so let me level with you for a second. Electrical engineering is pretty smart. General relativity is it's pretty fucking smart. Intro stage Mega Man FUCKING GENIUS! Classic Mega Man's had a lot of teaching tools strewn about its design, but the game itself was, you know, pretty simple. It was just a game about jumping and shooting. Jump and shoot! Should have been called Jump and Shoot Man. Jumping and shooting. Hey Mega Man, what are you doing? Oh nothing, I'm just jumping and shooting. What are you gonna do next? Oh, I'm gonna run and I'm gonna run to the right and I'm gonna jump and shoot! There weren't a lot of complex concepts in the overall design, so it didn't need a lot of time to teach you the basics. Mega Man X, on the other hand, has so much to offer and it teaches you all of it in the first level. No, in the first fucking seconds of the game. It's nuts! So I'm gonna show you everything it teaches you on this little checklist here. I'm gonna check it off whenever it teaches you, alright? Okay. So let's turn it on, let's start this thing up. Okay, skip the, the intro. Ugh, fuck, shit! Okay, okay, so, oh, look at that, you got a little Mega Man's on the menu screen, that's nice. See, right off the bat, that's kinda strange, I always the cursor, right? Usually it's like an arrow, or like a finger, or something? I don't know. Uh. Anyway, you press start, and WHAM! Oh, fuck, did you see that? He shot a little green blast at his hand there, that was neato. By the way, this is important, so write it down, because I'm going to do like a thing where I blow your fucking mind. All right, so moving on. So you're ready, you're teleporting, and bam, there's X. He's just standing there. So so let's assume I'm like a fucking idiot like modern game devs assume I am. I don't know what to do. I, uh, I, don't, I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm holding the controller. Uh, so there's arrows on this thing, and maybe the right arrow makes me go right. Oh my god, I'm moving right. Holy fuck. Fuck! So there's a wall to my left, so I should probably go right, right? That's cool. All right, so I'm walking, I'm walking. Giant wheel of spikes! Oh god, oh god, go back, 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 fuck the wall! Oh, man! Oh. Okay, so I got a lot of life, so that wasn't a big deal. It's okay to make those mistakes. I'm good, I'm good, unless I fall into a fucking pit. Oh, damn it! Okay, so I got a lot of lives too, okay? So it's good to make those mistakes too. I'm ready. Let's fucking fuck this spiky dude up, alright? So if I can't walk through the dude, I must be able to do something else. Alright, so uh, there's some buttons on this controller, hitting some buttons. And, whoa, oh my god, I'm in the air. Holy shit, I'm, I'm, like a, I'm like a jump man. I'm gonna jump over this guy. No biggie. It's cool. Yeah, I'm the fucking best. Holy shit, new guy. Alright, he's shooting things out. Me, I don't know. Whoa, whoa! Oh my God! I okay, okay. So I can jump over his things, but but he's too tall to jump over. Maybe I can like wait a second. Flashback. On the on the title screen, I shot a green thing when I press start. How do I? How do I'm gonna press buttons and 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 yeah, yeah, lemons. All right, I did it. I beat. I beat the guy. See what confuses me though is I shot a green thingy on the title screen, but. I only shot lemons when I hit the button, and no other button shoots the green thingy, so what? what do I- how do I shoot the green thingy? Well, for the sake of pacing in the video, and for the fact that I'm gonna BLOW YOUR FUCKING MIND WITH THIS SHIT! Let's assume that I'm not willing to experiment any further than what I've done, and I'm a stubborn dick, and I just wanna move on, so let's move on! Next up are some flying enemies, just jump and shoot them. HOLY SHIT, I CAN JUMP AND SHOOT AT THE SAME TIME! This game's amazing! This is so cool. This is so goddamn cool. What the fuck? Is that a bee? Yeah. 
Just to let you know, there's gonna be mini-bosses, and they're gonna be fucking awesome. This battle also acts as a small misdirection for a battle that's coming up that I'll go into when it happens. It's gonna blow your fucking mind! So what, what, they drop these enemies that have these long legs, and they walk real slow, so you get just the right amount of time to realize that, that your shots are, are going through their legs, they're not hitting them. So you just try the big dumb head, and bam, they're dead. So now you know that there are certain enemies that need to be attacked in certain sweet spots. See, this entire situation is teaching you all the rules of the game. Do you feel like you're in school yet? Do you feel like Mrs. Terwilliger's gonna give you detention for playing games in class? No, you feel like you're playing a game, stupid! Alright, so let's get serious here for a second. Check this fucking shit out! Take down the bumblebee man and he falls and goes boom and now you're stuck in a ditch. Well, what the fuck? How am I supposed to get out of here? You go left, you go right, there's no way out! What do you fucking do? Alright, so here we go. Bumblebee Man fell on the right side of the platform, but there's this little gap between him and the wall. Now when you're drawn to the walls, because there really isn't anything else to be drawn to, you hop up on the Bumblebee and you run at the wall, and then you slide down the wall. Now you can easily observe your descent is slow, there's a little smoke trail coming up, so you try it again. And this time, hitting buttons. Usually, you know, the jump button, because that's the only function you've learned so far that makes you ascend. And bada bing, bada boom, you're hopping on the walls. And that's how you get out. Good job. Now, now as a little additional bonus, on the right of the ditch, you see that there's health items and stuff. So, you know, if you want to test out your newfound ability that you taught yourself, by the way, the game didn't- Whoop! Mega Man! Mega Man! Yeah, you get the whole idea. You can go grab the reward and it feels fucking great. Feels fucking good. But hey, maybe this all seems a little silly to you. Like, duh, right? Like, of course you learn about a game by playing it long enough. That's like an inherent thing about games, right? No. Like, think of a game like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde for the NES, for example. Everybody should play this game if you want to get into game design. It's a perfect example of doing nothing to teach the player about its limits and goals. Nothing in this game seems to make sense. Stuff happens at random, people hurt you, some people don't, you walk backwards as Mr. Hyde, and I don't- Ugh! Of course, the game itself has limits, it has rules, it, it is a game, but it doesn't teach you anything about itself through the gameplay, and on top of that, the presentation is confusing, because all the clashing information you're being fed constantly Constantly just, just play this game for two minutes and you will understand how poorly you can teach a player about how to play your stupid game. A term used a lot for this concept is conveyance, and I think that's a fitting name. I mean, haven't you ever been playing a game and you're just like, where do I do? Where do I go? That's what I'm talking about. That's bad conveyance. Alright, <clears throat> okay, are you, sir, are you ready to get your fucking mind blown? Cause this is where I'm gonna fucking blow your fucking mind- So you get to the end of the level, gotta beat some stupid fucking cars or whatever, I don't fucking know. Riding on cars! <laughs> Then this fucking huge ass dude comes down in this giant robot man suit and starts wrecking your shit. Fuck! All the things I've learned! All the things I've applied aren't helping me! He's just fucking wrecking me! How weak and helpless do you feel? My blow number one. You have no idea if you're hurting Vile or not, so you don't have any idea whether this is a scripted sequence or not, because the first boss you fight in the game, the B, doesn't have a life bar. So how are you supposed to know whether or not Mega Man X goes about the same conventions as Mega Man Classic? What if all the enemies don't have life bars? You don't know. This also helps drive the helplessness point home. You have no idea what you're doing to this guy, fighting for your life. <clears throat> So, to add insult to injury, he traps you in a little electrical cage thingy, and he grabs the shit out of you, and he's like, Arr! and you're like, Arr! and he laughs, ha, 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 and you cry, but wha what's that? Whoa, fuck! That's the blasty thing I saw early on the title screen. That's what I want. I want that. How do I, what, how do I do that? And who the fuck is this person? Is that a guy or a girl? I don't fucking know. But then what's that? Looks like he's charging his shot. That's what the- Mind blow number two. It all makes sense now. The green shot is the same shot that Zero fires, and I have to charge up my buster to do it. Fuck! Now I know! I didn't have to have somebody tell me with a- Whoop. Mega Man! Mega Man! Shut up! So clearly this guy's fucking awesome, and he just wrecked this dude you didn't even know you could do damage on, and the dude's like, oh fuck, and just runs away. So he turns around, and this guy's named Zero, by the way, so he looks over you and he's like, look, X, let me live with you for a sec. You're strong, but you're not as strong as I am. But check it out. Someday, you will be as strong as I am. What the fuck? This shit blew my goddamn mind when I was little. Forget it. I get to be as cool as Zero? Fucking... Forget it. The crazy super blue buster shot, the dash, the fucking... The hair? I don't know. It's fucking Zero. I want to be him. This, my little sequelitis is... is, is, is this is called theming. This is what makes the feel of Mega Man X's story elements feel so potent. 
Everything in this game has to do with Mega Man X growing stronger, and all the elements are clear. You not only have the personal parallel character Zero, who represents how strong you will become, but also the goal to defeat Vile, who at this point in time, you can't even physically damage. And this isn't experienced just in cutscene or anything like that. It's also expressed in gameplay. You get to feel the utter helplessness of being so weak as a player. You don't have to empathize with the character on the screen because the feeling happens directly to you. So now you have true motivation as a player. You want to defeat this asshole you couldn't even damage, and you want to do it by becoming as strong as Zero. How do you do this? By playing the fucking game! You find the armor, you beat the enemies, you ride on the cool roller coaster thing, all the armor upgrades, which by the way make you look more like Zero, the health upgrades, the enemy upgrades, they're all motifs of the theme of growing stronger. Everything that makes Mega Man X unique resonates to the theme that it establishes immediately, and through to the end, you feel something. A connection to the hero that not a lot of games can successfully manifest. Something you legitimately desire as a player is something that's relevant to the game's story. Your desire to surpass Zero and defeat Vile are both gameplay elements that are fun and interesting. Theming. Intro stage. Fuck. Number two! Movement! <sighs> okay, let me cool down for a second. Mega Man Classic had super tight controls, nobody can argue that. The movement was at a really nice, unfrustrating speed, your hitbox was really clear and square-like, jumping felt good because you could control the height and you could control your trajectory in mid-air, how does that even work? Now what's interesting is that Mega Man X's controls were nearly identical. Seriously, the speed, the jump arcs, they're pretty much spot on from the first games. I mean, why fix what isn't broken? But now there's two factors that dramatically change the way the entire game is designed. Wall jumping and dashing. An ability Zero had! How about that shit? Now, it seems like two really simple upgrades, but everything is different now. The way you avoid enemies, the way you can approach enemies, the way you can traverse obstacles, everything. These two movement options give you the ability to go more places much more easily and much more quickly, which means the terrain had to expand to accommodate. Mega Man Classic focused a lot on single screen obstacle course type layouts, which were basically rendered obsolete by dashing and wall jumping. Not to mention the flow of the game's openness would be fucked up by the super slow screen transitions from Mega Man Classic, which have all been completely eliminated except for the boss battle introduction rooms, which in my opinion increases the drama even more so before battle, because now there's a huge contrast from how the rest of the game goes about its scene transitions. Now dashing also uniquely influences another change in terrain, slopes. The ability to ascend but still maintain a dash and not have to run into a stupid fucking wall was essential to keeping the game's flow intact. Now wall jumping exclusively affected the abundance of vertical segments. Mega Man Classic tried the whole vertical thing with the Like Man stage and Mega Man 1 and they were fucking dumb and hard and fuck! And they didn't even revisit them unless they involved some sort of gimmick like the bubbles in Wave Man stage or, or straight down falling like Quick Man stage which comes a lot more naturally to Mega Man's control steam because, I mean, there's gravity which, gravity, fuck! So... That's it. That's number two. Number three! <sighs> Man, I just like Mega Man X. I mean, I'm serious. I fucking, like, this is my favorite game. So I'm just gonna, like, I'm gonna gush right now, okay? I'm, I'm just gonna gush. Dude, wasn't it fucking awesome when you used Boomer Quanger's weapon on Flame Mammoth and his trunk came off? That was so... Yeah! Wasn't it so neat how you could, like, like ride in a giant mobile suit armor and, like, punch shit? Fuck... Uh, oh man, wasn't it the bomb getting the fucking Street Fighter Hadouken and then like, tr like trashing Vile like, like in one hit, just BAM! Yeah, fuck you! All that stress you gave me in the first level, I don't even give a fuck, yeah, fuck you! Wasn't it cool how like, Stormingle stage was like, it wasn't even like, in a box room, it was like, outside on an airship and you were like, Oh fuck, he's flying around, where the fuck is he? Isn't it cool that if you like, just decide to skip to, to the getting the mobile suit armor thing, then if you just walk forward as regular X, the, the other enemies that are in mobile suit armors are actually outside their mobile suit armors, so you can like, get like a, a chance to like, kind of stand a chance against them, because they're fucking hard, right? And then if you kill them before you get in their mobile suit, you can steal it, and it's, God, it's, it's fucking brilliant! You know Sigma, the you know how the last boss Sigma is like really fucking hard and even if you have full sub tanks you use up all your sub tanks and then you die and then you're just like, well shit, now I don't even stand a chance because I couldn't even beat him with four sub tanks but the level right before you go up to Sigma has like these infinitely spawning caterpillars, caterpillars that you can just kill with Arm Armadillo's charge thing and then you can stand there and be just like and just kill him and then you get your sub tanks filled up in like a second and then you can beat Sigma again it's it's fucking brilliant, it's amazing, God! Alright, so that's it. Just go on eBay and and buy a Super Nintendo unless you are already uh, have one. Oh, fuck. Just go. Go play Mega Man X, all right? It's good. I swear it's like it's fucking good. If this makes me that excited, if I can 
if I can tear down Castlevania 2, which is, people have been like, they've been like, oh, oh, it's a good game. And I'm like, Mega Man X is the best game ever. And you better fucking play this game because it's, it's good.